This week we're going to talk about the next step in the study of mechanics. Last week we talked about forces. Now we're going to add on to that the concepts of work, power, and momentum. First of all, let's look at work and what work represents. Work is the transfer of energy from one object to another through the use of force. So this diagram shows you that the person has picked up this box, thus generating a force, and has carried the box over a definitive displacement. So it's the combination of a force exerted over a displacement. Thus work can only be done when there is motion involved. If no mo motion occurs, no matter how much force is generated, no work is performed. Now, as this diagram or this slide suggests, work can either be positive or negative. In the example here, the work is positive if the person lifts the box from the ground. On the other hand, if the work is considered negative if it's lowering the box on the, from the ground. And the, the reason one is negative and the other is positive is because uh, it's positive because it's against the natural inclination of the box to go to the ground. And it's negative because it is in the same direction as the, what the box would do if he just let go and let the box, let the box go. So the amount of work done is the amount of energy that's transferred. So work is equal to force times D, which can be displacement or distance. It's technically it's called displacement. And because force is a vector quantity and displacement is a vector quantity, work is also a vector quantity. The units of work are joules as we've talked about before. And one joule is the work necessary to move one newton, or use one newton of force, one meter in distance. So it's a newton times a meter. So one joule is equal to a newton times a meter. Now work can actually be necessary to overcome friction. However, if enough force is not generated to overcome friction, and no motion occurs, then no work is done. The work only occurs when the mass actually begins to move. So if the father pulls on this wagon, but he does not generate enough force to get the wagon to start moving, even though he's generating force, he's not doing any work. He only generates or, or accomplishes work when the wagon actually moves over, over a displacement, over a distance. Now when work is done in the real world against friction, the object will stop moving once the work is stopped. And that is because the energy that is put in by the man is lost to friction in the form of heat, sound, and other forms of energy. In other words, if you pull a box across the ground, you can hear it grinding against the ground. That's sound energy. If you feel the bottom of the box, it will have warmed up. That's the generation of heat energy. If there were no friction, once this man imparted a certain amount of work or force to the box, it would continue to move and would not stop. So let's do a couple of problems now, looking at work. The first problem is as follows. A group of people get together behind a van and push it on its rear bumper with a net force of 585 newtons in the forward direction. And they push the van for, for 15 meters. How much work would be accomplished? Now this is pretty straightforward. Work is going to equal to the force generated times the distance so work is going to equal, in this case, 565 newtons times 15.0 meters. So 565 times 15. 
So in this case, the amount of work done is equal to 8,475 joules. Now, significant figure-wise, we have three in each of these. So we would cut this off and call it 8,480 8, joules to the proper number of significant figures. The second says, a man throws a 16-kilogram ball 35.5 meters. How much work is done? Okay. Now, remember, weight is equal to mass times acceleration, or in this case, gravity. So the weight here is going to be 16 kilograms times, this is weight, not work, 16 kilograms times 9.8. So the force to move this ball is 156.8 newtons. That's how much force it takes to move the ball. And it moves 35.5 meters. So the work performed is going to be 156.8 times 35.5. This is work is equal to force times distance now. And if we do the math here, we get 5,566.4. And it's three significant figures, so it's going to equal 5,570 joules. Now the second part of this problem says that the same amount of work is applied to a 25 kilogram ball. So how far will it go? So if we apply this much work, or we can even use this number if you want to, we have work is equal to force times distance. Now we want to know the distance, so that's going to equal the work divided by the force. So that's going to equal 5,570 divided by, now it's 25 kilograms, so 25 times 9.8 to get the weight. And if we do the math here, the answer is 22.73 Four, seven. And again, if we do it to three significant figures, it's 22.7 meters. The next topic we're going to talk about is power. Now, power is the accomplishing of work over a period of time. So the factor of time is taken into account. Two people can do the same amount of work but one person can generate a lot more power than another person if they do it more quickly. So power is the rate of doing work, or the work per unit time. Power is equal to work divided by time. Power is directly related to work. That is, the more work you do, the more power you generate if time is kept uh, the same. And it is inversely related to time. And the unit that we generally use for power is, is called a watt. And a watt is one joule per second. In the English system, the unit of power is horsepower. And a horsepower, one horsepower, is equal to 550 foot-pounds foot being the distance, pounds being the, the force per second. And there are approximately 700 watts in one horsepower. Now I show you this slide because as you can guess, watts are also used to uh, discuss electrical power and I just wanted to point this out that, that the electrical power is also expressed in terms of watts and it's equal to the amperage times the voltage and we will come back to this in several weeks when we talk about electrical electricity and electrical power. Now let's do a couple of power problems. The first of these is during the powerhouse lab Jerome runs up the stairs, elevating his 
102 kilogram body a vertical distance of 2.29 meters in a time of 1.32 seconds at a constant speed. What is the power? Okay, so the first thing we have to figure out is how much work does, does he do? And work is equal to force times distance and it's 102 kilograms which is a mass and we have to take times acceleration so that's 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.29 meters so the amount of work he performs is 2289.084 um, joules now since this is not the answer they're asking for we can leave it in this many significant figures, but we're going to have to come back and correct that when we get to the end. Now power is equal to work divided by the time, so that's going to be 2289.084 divided by 1.32 seconds, and if we do the math here, we get 1734 point one five watts to three significant figures because all three of these is in, are three significant figures that's going to be seventeen hundred and thirty watts to three significant figures now let's look at the second one a new conveyor system at the local packaging plant utilizes a motor powered mechanical arm to exert an average force of 890 newtons to push a large crate a distance of 12 meters in 22 seconds. Determine the power output required for such a motor. Okay, so again, power is going to equal work divided by time. This is force, sorry, not work. And that's going to equal 890, which is the, the force, and the distance is 12 meters, and the time is 22 seconds. So if we do the math here, we get 485.45 watts. Now here, these two, all three of these are two significant figures, so it's actually 490 watts to two significant figures.